court more, and it's I'm obviously looking better as well. Uh, it's just something that'll help my game. Uh, if I'm making the mid range and they start stepping up, I can just hesitate and blow by anybody. So um, it's just gonna help my game. Yeah, you guys got a new guy in the gym all of a sudden? Have you have you had a practice with Hamadou? Uh, no, this is gonna be his first practice today. What advice did you give him? Uh, I actually haven't even given him advice yet. Have you talked to him? Yeah, yeah, I've talked <laughs> to him. I've interacted talked, with him? Yeah, I've talked to him. But uh, I mean, I've known I knew him before uh, before he came here. So I mean, he was already a friend. Uh, now he's just he's getting his feet wet. Talk about him as a player then. Uh, man, well, back in high school, I mean, he was he was so strong and just big and physical, and, uh, more physical than everybody. So I mean, he can just bully his way to the basket. He's always been able to shoot the ball. I mean, if you're in the way when he's on his way to the basket, she most likely gonna get dunked on. Is he another torture device Calipari can use on you guys in practice? I mean, I guess the plan is for him to, to practice against you guys for the rest of this season. Is it just to have a high level guy like that who's coming at you guys every day in practice. Uh, definitely, definitely, he's gonna make us better, and uh, we're gonna make him better. So. Uh, I mean, it's just, like I said, he's a combination of speed and power. Just some like you know, not not too many people have. And, uh, at a you know, at a wing spot, it's gonna help us. Uh, him guarding me, Malik, and, and Isaiah, just switching off of all of us, and then us having to guard him as well. It's gonna make us all better. Did you talk to him when he was here visiting? I mean, this is an odd sort of plan. I mean, not a lot of guys do this. Did, did you talk to him about how? Uh, I think he said some of the guys here told him just. The, the development that, that, that you get here is part of the reason he came. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like even if you're not gonna play, uh, I mean, I think, I think that half a year here, that extra summer here is just, uh, it's gonna make him better. What would you tell him about how hard the practices are gonna be? Uh, man, at this point, I don't have to tell him he's about to see for himself today. <laughs> just he better hope we don't run as much as, as much as we do sometimes. Does Kel talk to you about calling plays at the end of the game and empowering you to take charge of the team? Uh, yeah, he has a little bit. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean still, I'm still young, uh, freshman, and uh, I mean, it just comes from me try, just trying to be an extension of him on the court. But uh, at this point right now, it's you know Isaiah and him. They have been doing it towards the end of the games, but uh, it's something that I need to learn how to do. What's the difficult part about learning how to do that? Uh, just know which ones to call, how much time to, uh, how much time on the shot clock to run it. It just you know, just different different variations of uh, the situation. How much do you like that sort of setup though, where the ball's in Isaiah's hands and you're kind of running the baseline, using your speed to get yourself open against that zone? Uh, I mean, it, it, it works for us vice versa. You know, somehow we'll put him in the middle of the zone or on the baseline or you know, me hitting the switch. But uh, last game I was effective at it, so I stayed there. And uh, you know, sometimes he might be more effective in that game, and he'll stay down there. How surprised were you when Cal put you back in the game after two fouls? What did you learn from that? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't really say it was a surprise because, I mean, I picked up two, Malik picked up two, and Dom picked up three, so somebody had to play. So he would just kind of rotate us uh, every, like, two, two three minutes. So, uh, I mean, it was it was sort of a surprise. I didn't, I mean, I didn't know who he was going to play, but, uh, I mean, I got in the game. I was trying not to foul and uh, just kept being aggressive. Can Briscoe make you laugh by staring at you like he is now? Yeah, everybody, everybody on the team can make me laugh. What has Cal told you? <laughs> what has Cal told you about him power? Um, just, just. Uh, I mean, most of the time he just say he said will to win, but uh, I mean, just the empowerment of you know just being able to take control of your team, and um, I mean, I think the second half I kind of controlled the uh, I kind of controlled the pace of the game in the second half, but. Uh, that's just something I have to be able to. I have to have to be able to um, stand the whole game, you know, be able to control the game without getting in foul trouble. You know, do it defensively without without reaching or using hands or biting someone. But uh, I mean, I think Zay Zay did it. Zay did it last game for the most part. Cal's been talking a lot about discipline. Where do you see you can be more disciplined? Uh, defensively and just being ready. Uh, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm not. I'm not ready for the play. Uh, something to catch me by surprise. You like see me like jump and then start using my speed to try to catch up. But uh, just being ready at this point. How, how much of a sense of relief is there when we ask you so many times about your shooting and then you have a stretch like this where they, they go down and we're asking you good stuff about your shooting? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's a sign of relief. Uh, it's just something that I've been working on and just trying to get back. How have you kind of adapted to the reality that there are going to be you know, highs and lows lows in your shooting like that? I mean, how have you prepared? Uh, I mean, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, even in high school, I had stretches where I would make every shot and stretches where I miss a lot of shots. But uh, it's just part of the game. You know, everyone's going to go through those shooting walls. How do the coaches help you with that, though? Uh, just keep shooting. And, I mean, when you're off or even if you're on, you know, you stay in the gym. You just you never change what you're doing. Is it a form thing? Is it a, you know, be ready when it comes to you thing? Have you been able to pinpoint point when it's not going well? Uh, for me, it's just being ready. Um, just be ready to shoot when I'm 
most of the time right now when I'm ready to shoot, it's, it's me going in. So uh, it's just being ready at this point. What is that? I mean, Cal talks about that. Guys talk about it. What is ready to shoot look like? Uh, just, just being down in the stance, uh, not standing straight-legged, um, having your hands ready, and just the mentality that you're, that you're ready to shoot the ball instead of it coming into your hands and then you're like, oh, well, I'm open now, then shoot. And just, just always being ready. Is some of that confidence, too? There, there are other times where you're maybe in the back of your mind, you don't necessarily want to get it because the shot's not falling. You have to kind of will yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It can definitely be confidence. Like, if you're not confident about your shot, then nine times out of ten, it's not going to go in. But if you're confident, even if you're missing, just believe that the next shot's going to go in. When you work on your shooting, when you come here to take extra shooting, do you just try to get up shots? Do you work on your form? I mean, are you concentrating on anything in particular? Uh, I mean, it, that you did? Uh, it's, it's form, but it's also about making shots, not necessarily just getting up shots because if you're missing, then it's not really helping you. But uh, it's just making a number of shots, and uh, everything is just with movement. So um, you'll be sprinting, being ready to shoot but while you're tired, uh, just things of that sort. You're in knowing what you know now about what this is here, what practices are like, what Cal is like, you know, the adjustment to the level. Put yourself in, in Diallo's shoes. How hard would it be to jump in in the middle of this season? If you'd come in the middle of your high school season last year, if you just rolled up in here and started to play with this thing. Uh, it'll be, it, it would have been extremely difficult for me. Just, I mean, I, I didn't, I kind of, I didn't really, you know, struggle at the beginning, but, uh, I think in the middle of the season, while when everybody's you know when everybody's starting to try to hit their peaks, uh, and you're just coming in, you're you're at the bottom of the barrel, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, I think it's, it's extremely difficult to come in uh, mid-season like that. Does it take some pressure off a guy like that then to just say from the beginning, "Hey, I'm not going to play. I'm just here to learn and get better." Yeah, yeah. I don't think you have any pressure. Uh, I mean, you're coming in. You're literally just coming in to get better. You're playing against you know some of the top players in the country, and they have kind of a year, a year and a half, and then he's got a couple people that's a lot older than him. So, uh, I mean, at this point, he really doesn't, he doesn't have anything to lose. He's just coming in, uh, coming with a clear mind and just, just ready to get better. Did you have a relationship with him before he got to UK? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I knew him in high school. Did you play against him at all in uh, uh No, I never played against him, but sometimes we'd be in the same place at the same time and things like that.